Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system it's a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or health challenges your loved one may be dealing with, if you want a good nutritional supplement program to help you wean yourself off your medication, and we always encourage people who are on medication to wean themselves off their meds. If you are on meds for long term, you are not doing your body any good, period. Even if you're hiding your symptoms. If you have a health challenge and you're on a prescription drug that's somehow controlling the symptoms, what's happening is you're still rotting from the inside. Even if you don't know it, your body is still breaking down from the inside. What's more is you're costing yourself nutrients. All drugs require nutrition for their elimination and detoxification. Thus, you run higher risks of nutritional deficiencies. Thus, you run higher risks of all kinds of health challenges associated with those nutritional deficiencies. So if you are on a medication, long-term, chronic, like one of those that you're on the rest of your life, you really want to think about weaning yourself off as best as you can with your, uh, it's always, you always want to wean yourself off with your doctor if he's prescribed something. It's just respectful to your other healthcare professionals to let them know what you're doing, but it's your right to wean yourself off your meds and you should be. But when you wean yourself off your meds, you want to replace your meds with better lifestyle choices and a good nutritional supplement program. We can help you. We can tell you how to do that. 844-236-6010 is our number today on the bright side, today and every day on the bright side. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website as well, or you can call 866 735 2470. If being an entrepreneur appeals to you, if helping people with their health at the most fundamental level of their beingness, their health appeals to you, if you're a healthcare professional or if you like the health business, and it is a trillion dollar business, and a lot of folks are making some good money helping people understand and utilize nutrition, nutritional supplementation, and lifestyle choices to get better naturally, the way the body's supposed to get better. If that appeals to you, please call 866 735 2470 for more info for a one time $25 fee. You can be in business. Or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right. We are talking cells and cell membranes. I hope this isn't too in the weeds. It's so fascinating, the nature of a cell. A cell is like a little crystal, a little tiny electrical entity. Do you know all your cells, every one of the 100 trillion cells in your body are unique and special? They're the, each cell is like a little gem. A little electrical living gem, like a snowflake. Even if you have liver cells and, and, and brain cells and skin cells, and they're all kind of similar, each one has its own unique profile, its own unique electrical spectrum. 
And electrical it is. It's got charges and electrical potentials. And the cell generates an electrical field. It's got voltages and currents. And any, any electrical term, any term you want to apply from the world of electronics, conductors and semiconductors and insulins, uh, insulators and resist, uh, resistors and uh, any term you name, capacitors, it applies to a cell. It's every bit as much an electrical circuit as the things that are in your computer chips or in transistors. We've been spending time talking about the, the sliver that covers this unbelievable, mind-blowing living entity called a cell, which is just as mind-blowing, the cell membrane. A cell is about a 1-50th uh, or 1-100th of a head of a pin. One, you can fit 100 or so cells end-to-end, -end, red blood cells end-to-end -end on the head of a pin. It's a tiny, infinitesimal little thing. And on top of this tiny little infinitesimal thing, you've got something that's even more, a thousand times smaller, a thousand times thinner, called the cell membrane. The cell membrane is 4,000 times thinner than a human hair. The cell membrane is this little, tiny, 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 tiny sliver of stuff that is basically the brain. It's the information processor of a cell. And the cell is electrical, certainly, but the membrane is even more electrical because it's got more electricity per in, in a tinier space. It's packed with electricity, but not electricity like we know it. Pieces of electricity. Not electricity, pieces of them, if you can imagine. They're called electrons. They're pieces of electricity. And the cell membrane is packed with these, and it uses these pieces of electricity to transmit, to store and process and transmit information to the inside of a cell. Bruce Lipton calls it the, the membrane. The cell membrane is the brain of the cell. It's the interface between the outside world and the inside world. And it is every bit as electrical as the cell and every bit as electrical as a semiconductor or anything else. It's a liquid crystal semiconductor. It's got gates and it's got channels and it's got charges and it's got capacitance and it's got resistance. It's got everything. The whole cell and the cell membrane, and the cell membrane itself, by the way, is crystalline too. The whole cell, this is amazing. It's like a crystal, a living crystal. The cell is, and then the membrane, it's like a sliver of a liquid crystal. Completely unique, like a little gem, like a little jewel. And like all crystals, the cell, as well as the membrane, generates electricity. It's receptive to electricity. And at the end of the day, that electricity comes from what we call cell food. The electricity in the cell membrane, the electricity in the cell, which are the determining factor in whether a cell will be healthy or not, come from cell food, which we call the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. This is what the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients do. They facilitate electrical movement, the movement of electricity inside and outside of the cell. They do it at different frequencies, and I'm not even going to get into that because that's a whole other story. And oh, that is unbelievably cool right there. The mighty 90 essential nutrients are electrical little pieces of electrical frequencies that we put into our body and they get into a cell that facilitate the electrical energies, all the vast electronics of a cell. And ultimately it's food. It's not the mighty 90 essential nutrients, it's food and we supplement our food with the mighty 90 essential nutrients, but it's really food. This is the food we eat and the supplements we take are where all that electricity comes from and ultimately it all comes from the sun because the food gets its electricity from the sun. So it goes sun to food slash supplements to cells. That's why you want to be out in the sun, and that's why you want to be eating electrically rich foods, electronically alive foods, electronically alive minerals that come from plants and vegetables and fresh foods. And you know what you don't want to be eating? You don't want to be eating power bars. And you don't want to be eating cereal. And you don't want to be eating a lot of cooked food. You don't want to be eating anything that's heavily processed because its electronics are gone. It's dead food. Oh, yeah. And 80% of the food we eat is this kind of food. We're eating, we're subsisting on foods that don't have the electrical energy that drives the production of, of electro electricity in the cells and ultimately all the actions of cells. That, my friends, in a nutshell, is why we have this epic, epidemic, epic health disaster. This health disaster of biblical proportions where one out of three of us has a chronic disease. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 
You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the Bright Side, Farms has been here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. If you miss program, we've got them archived. We've got six, uh, seven plus years of Bright Side episodes archived. I think, we just, I think we just completed our seventh year or maybe our eighth year, our seventh full year of doing programs on the Genesis Communication Network. Thank you, Ted, for, for setting that up. I appreciate it. And also uh, thank you, Peter, in the UK for setting up Ben Fuchs Archives. And also thank you to Robert, my buddy, my webmaster, who set up PharmacistBen.com. You can get uh, all the longevity products at PharmacistBen.com. Also BrightSideBen.com and CriticalHealthNews.com. And you can sign up to join the BrightSide Ben team off our websites as well. BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. Or call 866-735-2470 for more information. And also want to remind you to, to please check out our Truth Skin Health products at TruthTreatments.com or Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist. Biomimetic Priming Mist is made with fulvic minerals. And uh, also high aluronic acid, which we'll be talking about here in a little bit. Amino acids and also a little bit of lactate, skin-friendly amino acid, a skin-friendly alpha hydroxy acid. You can find out about all our Truth Treatment products, including our Truth Biomimetic Priming Mist at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so the cell is uh, a little electrical system. Think of every term you could think of from electronics, and you can apply it to a cell, except it's a biological electrical system. The whole idea of biochemistry really got going in about the 1830s or 1840s, and it was uh, uh, the electrical nature of the body and the electrical nature of cells really didn't catch on until much later. We didn't really know about the electrical nature of the body specifically until like the 1840s or 1850s. That famous frog experiment is when it was first deduced that the body operated electrically, like an electrical system. But the electrical nature of a cell, that took a lot longer for them to discover. And biochemistry and uh, organic chemistry and drug chemistry and pharmacochemistry really got, ha, got a big head start on electrical, the electrical nature of cells. And the profit margin was so high in making these little molecules that affect the biochemistry of the body that uh, nobody wanted to rock the boat, and thus is the, this is where Big Pharma came from. But really, we're electrical at the end of the day. You know why this is so cool? Is because we can control our electronics with things that we do in our lives. We can control our electronics by our thinking. We can control our, our electronics by other people's thinking or by the environment, the thinking environment we're in, the people we're around. We control our electrical energy. Our electrical energy is controlled by water. It's controlled by uh, the foods we eat, the supplements we take. It's controlled by our emotions and by our feelings, or probably ultimately our spirituality. We can control our electricity, which is the most fundamental nature of health, through our behaviors and through our actions and the things that we do. And that sounds all new agey, but guess what? It's biochemically and bioelectrically and biologically accurate, whether it sounds new agey or not. Oh, by the way, energy and electricity, electricity is obviously a form of energy. Energy is measured by something called frequency. One of the ways you measure energy is by its frequency. So when everybody talks about frequency, frequency is just up, uh, is just on and off, or some you could say up and down. Vibration equals frequency. So if people talk about vibrations, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about electrical energy, which you can control by thinking and by feeling and by eating and by exercising and by breathing etc. We don't hear about any of this stuff. This is, if we were really interested in healing, and I predict that in the healing of the future, we'll be leveraging our ability to control our electricity, to, to work at the level of the little liquid crystal semiconductor that we call a cell or a cell membrane. So cell membrane is fats and protein, about 50-50 fats and proteins. It's so fragile. The cell membrane is like, you can think of it like a candy coating on an M&M, and it covers the cell. But you know what? That cell membrane, this is how amazing biology is, that cell membrane is covered with another membrane. There's a membrane on top of the membrane, and that secondary membrane is made up of sugar. There are sugars that stick out of that second membrane, Technically, they call it the glycocalyx. The glycocalyx, which means sugar mask or sugar coat, 
is a bunch of sugars that look like, if you look at them under a, a, an electron microscope, you can't even see them under a microscope, but if you look under an electron microscope, it'll look like trees. It'll look like trees off of the, like a tree forest covering the, uh, the cell membrane, which itself is covering the cell. And this tree forest, this brush, it almost looks like, it looks like a, just like, like a, um, like a forest, basically. It's, and it's designed to act as a protector for the membrane. And it's these sugar trees, this sugar forest, that plays the key role in the immune system, in identification of the enemy. How unbelievable is this? At the level of a cell, you have this defensive system called the immune system. The immune system recognizes friend or foe by their glycocalyx, by their sugar trees. And these sugar trees play a major role in inflammation and the immune system and in cancer especially. Which is why eating these sugar trees, getting these sugar trees, it's called glyconutrition, is so important when it comes to good health. So we talk about eating the membrane. We talk about membrane lipid replacement therapy, as they call it, MLR therapy. We talk about, talk about eating the membrane. Well, I'm not done talking about eating the membrane. There's more I want to say. But you can also eat the membrane membrane, the membrane of the membrane, <laughs> the glycocalyx. I hope this isn't too overwhelming because it's so unbelievably fascinating and it plays a really important role in how healthy we are. Glyconutrition is a key component of health. That's why you want to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are your best source of glyconutrition. Some of you may have heard of an MLM company called Manitech. Manitech became one of the, it's, it still is, it became one of the biggest MLM countries in the world because they got into the science of glyconutrition. In longevity, we got a product called uh, uh, Ultimate Youth, which is glyconutrition. They're glyconutrients in your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Glyconutrients are, are, are the nutritional elements. They're not, they're essential actually, now that I think about it. They're essential nutrients. There's eight of them. There's eight essential sugars that form the building blocks of these trees, of these sugar trees. Mannose, xylose, fucose, galactose. There's eight of them. And they're all found in unprocessed foods, especially fruits and veggies. Fr fruits and veggies are your best sources of these things. You can also do use your ultimate youth for longevity and get your, get your uh, sugar trees, your glyconutrients, but the best way is going to be, going to be from food. These glyconutrients, these sugar trees, the glyconutrients are the building blocks, and then the sugar trees that are made up of these building blocks attract water. Water and sugar go together, like hand and glove. Water is very, in chemistry we say it's hygroscopic. It means it sucks up water. That's why you drop some sugar into a glass of water, and it just dissolves right away. The sugar molecules pull in all that water. So this whole glycocalyx, the sugar trees, are coated with water. It's not just the glycocalyx. It's a water combination. You know what happens when you get sugary glyconutrients in water? You get slime. And this water combination of, with, the, with the sugar trees gives, has a gooey quality, and it contributes a slimy coating to all cells. This is why organs look slimy and tissues look slimy. It's the sugar trees on all the little cells. And it's this watery, slimy layer that plays a major role, major role in how healthy the cell is going to be. It has a major protective role, as well as an identification role. And there's a, lots of toxins that work by disturbing this glycocalyx, which we will talk about uh, probably on our next Bright Side episode. We're coming back with more good health information right after this. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back. Don't go away. Look. We are back on the bright side, and we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls momentarily. If you're on hold, hang tight. And uh, we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products we'll be talking about or we recommend on the program at, uh, when we take your calls, 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Bright Side Ben team. You can, they can take your orders. They can also sign you up to join the Bright Side Ben team. You can also order from our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, from uh, Sweden, research teams examined the effects of reduced carbohydrate consumption without an accompanying reduction in calories. In other words, eating the same calories, but just reducing your carbs. What they found was uh, improved non-alcoholic fatty liver disease numbers. 
Subjects showed rapid and dramatic reductions of liver fat and other cardiometabolic risk factors when they dropped their carbohydrates. Surprise, surprise. There is no biological need for carbohydrates. The best carbs are going to come from vegetables, not from sugars. Sugars are a disaster. Our refined sugars are absolute epic. If you had to pick one thing that was responsible for our epic health disaster that is the current state of health in the United States of America and in the Western world in general, you could blame, you could put it right on the front doorstep of incredible amounts, ex, incredible excess amounts of ingested sugar. And I'm not talking about the eight essential sugars here. I'm talking about the refined processed sugars from Princeton University. Study reveals what happens in the gut after too much fructose. There is a fundamental physiologic difference in how smaller and larger amounts of sugar are processed in the body, explains Joshua D. Rabinowitz of the Lewis Sigler Institute for Integrated Genomics at Princeton University. Listen to what he's saying. There is a fundamental difference in how smaller and larger amounts of sugar are processed. That means smaller amounts, the kind that we used to eat when we were growing up on the African savanna, the tiny little amounts that the body's used to, are handled differently from the massive amounts that we're getting today. We're getting thousands upon thousands upon thousands the amount of, uh, uh, times the amount of sugar that we are supposed to be getting. Researchers observed that excess fructose that is not absorbed by the small intestine continues through the intestine into the colon. As a consequence, it comes into contact with the microbiome, the, the bacteria that live in the large intestine, the so-called microbiome. This is so important, people. Sugar is supposed to be absorbed. It's not supposed to stay in the gut. The micro, the, Dr. Rabinowitz says the, micro, quote, the microbiome, which lives in the colon, the large intestine, is designed to never see sugar, unquote. One can eat an infinite amount of carbohydrates and there will be, quote, nary a molecule of glucose that enters the microbiome. But as soon as you drink the soda or juice, the microbiome is seeing an extremely powerful nutrient that it was never designed to see. So we're overwhelming our body with these sugars. The worst culprits are the fruit juices and the dried fruits. Now, dried fruits are probably the worst because at least you're getting some of the electrolytes in a fresh fruit juice. But if, it's not, if you're not getting a fresh fruit juice, those are pretty bad too. If you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you've been diagnosed with, yeast, with, with chronic yeast, if you have any GI problems, I'm telling you, laying off the sugar, especially the juices, the fruct and especially, fruct not especially, but including fructose, is your number one health strategy for fixing the gut and for controlling chronic degenerative disease. I, the, the triangle disease has digestive system first and then the blood sugar system second, but they go back and forth because the blood sugar system affects the gut and the gut affects the blood sugar system, and they all affect the adrenal thyroid complex, and the adrenal thyroid complex affects the gut and affects the blood sugar system. They're all interrelated. All right, 844-236-6010. I'll get you one more story, and then we'll get your phone calls. Actually, let's get to the phones, I think. Got a bunch of calls here. Let's, uh, let's go to Chris in California. Good morning, Chris. Welcome to the Bright Side. Yo, Chris. Chris, Chris. Hello, Chris. Are you, did you pocket dial us? Are you really there? I'm going to put you back on hold here. Hello? Okay. Hey, Chris. What's up, man? Yeah, hi. How's it going? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, um, I basically wanted to talk to you about um, I've been having some issues. But we'll just impress the call real quick. I've been using the product overall for about a year and a half, and I had pretty good results. Like my tinnitus, I used to have some tinnitus, and... Uh, and um, joint problems, and they're pretty much gone. And uh, nice. Stayed away from sugar. What are you using? I'm using the Beyond Setting Tangerine 2.0, the Oxyol FX, the glucose gels, and nice. overall, and e yeah, and even some probiotics too. Um, so overall, I've had pretty good uh, um, results. But the issue now is that I basically noticed that every time I try to eat eggs or, for example, liver, I tend to get some sort of a rash like below my. Um, Interesting. Like okay, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, yeah, it yeah, definitely sounds like you're reacting to something. Um, you yeah. know, that's it's good that you observe it, but the only way to deal with it is to uh, is to lay off of it, is to lay off the eggs yeah. or lay off the liver. It's too bad they're power yeah, foods. 
Right, right. But what what can I do then just to overall get some cholesterol in me? Because if anything... You don't have to worry about getting cholesterol in you uh, because cholesterol is made by the body. But if you really want to upregulate cholesterol, you can take squalane capsules. Mm -hmm. You can eat uh, veggie carbs, starchy veggies, Mm -hmm. sweet potatoes, for example, are a good one. Pumpkin, squash also. Uh, those will raise right. your cholesterol. Th- th- those will raise your body making cholesterol. You might want to try your eggs made a di- different ways. Sometimes you can handle certain ways and not others. You might want to mix that up a little right. bit. Yeah, well, that's the thing, too. I've tried them uh, poached, scrambled, and um, raw, and I've had some better results with it being boiled. But even then, after two two eggs uh, uh, in the whole day, I'm, if, if I eat more than two yeah. eggs, it's, yeah. and, and I've tried quail eggs, I've tried duck eggs, and pretty much the sort of the same thing sort of cause but you notice when you boil them but hang on a second you notice when you soft boil them they're not as they don't trigger as much of a reaction yeah uh, yeah but but even okay, then good. even then i only have like a limit of like two eggs and that's it and the only so reason eat, why i started beginning to eat eggs in the first place was because like i generally needed this from i feel stronger but that the issue is that how about fish can you do salmon can, can you do salmon yeah i can do salmon yeah yeah do, yeah, yeah, do fish do deep do fatty fish Right, and, and and also another thing too. Um, part of the reason why I kind of was um, uh, a bit taken off by the whole egg case too, I guess I'm having a lot of gas. So I don't know what that would mean. Uh, that, yeah, that sounds like you're not processing it. Well, gas always means that you're not processing food correctly. You're feeding okay. the bacteria. You're not digesting the food. That's definitely an indicator. That can happen with eggs for sure. Eggs are just active foods. And that happens when you have an active food. Go with fish, though. Fish doesn't have the same activity as eggs do, and you'll get the cholesterol complex. Like I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow, the cholesterol complex. It's not just cholesterol. It's the cholesterol complex. Foods that contain cholesterol contain other nutrients with that cholesterol. When you deprive yourself of a cholesterol complex containing food, you deprive yourself of a lot of really good nutrients that have nothing that are not the cholesterol, that are other nutrients that are with the cholesterol and what, and what I call the cholesterol complex. Chris, I'm going to let you go. i got a bunch more calls. I hope I answered your question, bro. And uh, have oh, a great yeah, day. Thank you. thank you. Take yeah. care. All right. If you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back from our break. It's time to take a commercial. Got lines open, by the way. 844-236-6010. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we'll be back after this. Medscape here, just got it just a minute ago. Sugary drinks but not foods linked to increased mortality. Consumption of drinks with a high sugar content, including soft drinks and fruit juices, is associated with an increased risk for all-cause mortality from coronary heart disease in middle-aged adults. From all-cause mortality and mortality from coronary heart disease in middle-aged adults, particularly those who are overweight or low income. I've been saying this for years. When you drink a drink a, a sugar. When you drink a fruit juice or a soft drink, that sugar goes boom right into your intestine, boom right into your right into your intestinal cells, boom right into your blood. And when the intestine gets overwhelmed, that sugar stuff goes right into the large intestine where it can wreak havoc on your microbiome. It's the sweet, sugary drinks that are the biggest problems. Not that you know the candy bars and the cakes and <clears throat> all the sugar in foods isn't a problem, but at least you get fiber there. When you get these drinks. You don't get the fiber, which tends to slow down the release of the sugars. Thought that was interesting. Just came in today. Sugary drinks, but not foods linked to increased mortality. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten. Let's go to Carol in South Carolina. Good morning, Carol. Welcome to the bright side. Oh, good morning, Ben. I I can't tell you what you've done for my life. Oh my goodness! You, Thank you. you. Changed- yeah, honest to God, I idolize you. I've been oh, listening no. to you uh, for years. Don't let me, oh, great. From, how did you first start from this show? Is How did you first start listening to me? Yeah, from this, show, this show and from um, from uh, Dr. Wallach. Okay, great. I, I saw you guys. T- I just, I think the world of you. I can't Thank you. say I enough that. about you. That means a lot. You how can I help my you? gut, too. You I didn't heal it. Because- no, I did not. I just gave you the information, the divine force, and you together, hand in hand healed your gut. All I did was give you the information. I'm all healed. Thank you. Anyway. Yes, ma'am. What I was going to ask you was, I've been doing, I'm on my third day of fasting. Okay. And I feel absolutely wonderful. That's awesome. It makes, 
You I'm sound 61 great. 61 years old. I don't take any medication. I think nice. I'm in, yeah, I'm in pretty good health. Nice. All because of your information. But anyway, to make a long yes. story short, I don't want to hold you up. Yes. Uh, I got like leg cramps last night. Is that an okay. indication that I should start eating? Yeah, maybe some electrolytes. Get yourself some veggie juice. Can you make, do you have a Vitamix? I do, and I, that's all I live on is smoothies because of make, what you, all your information. Awesome. Make it just a cucumber juice. Make a celery juice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just celery and salt. Or even just do salt, for that matter. Good salt. Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt, actually. I I'm now recommending Himalayan. Himala- yep. Himalayan. Yeah, uh, Himalayan salt and uh, and uh, also mix maybe some cucumber and Himalayan salt or celery and, cu- and Himalayan salt in a blender. The Vortex will electrify those minerals when you when you speed them up in the blender. And the minerals, uh, and when you, have, uh, when you have cramps, you have like an electrical issue, and the minerals can help with that uh, quickly. So, and also you might want to consider the B vitamins, but you'll get some of those in the celery juice. Just do celery juice and salt. That's what I would do. A little bit, not well, you a lot. know what I do? When I'm fasting, I don't take any of my supplements. You might be a little bit shy on electrolytes after three days. That could be happening. Um, so just right. do, a little sal- do a little bit of celery. You know, you could do a little BTT, but uh, that might help you too, beyond tangy tangerine. Either way, yep. get some electrolytes in your system. All right, okay? good. Thank you, All Carol. Right. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a great day. You. Thanks for the kind words. Thank I appreciate you. You it. You as well. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Let's go to Minnesota and say good morning to Lori. Hey, Lori. Welcome to the bright side. Hey, Ben. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? Well, I'm calling about my husband. He had a heart attack about a little over a year ago. Okay. And um, he was put on all the protocol. You know. Stuff Statin that drugs, they do after beta you blockers. Yeah, blood, is there a exactly. blood thinner too? He's on a blood yep, thinner also. All that yeah. stuff. Oh, that good stuff. Plus, he got four stents in his artery. Um, okay, all right. Well, not unusual. Quest, Just, yeah. yeah, I Go know. Ahead. Um, my question is: his, uh, about six months later, he was diagnosed with thyroid issues. Okay, and so they put him on thyroid. Centro- oh my God, that well. poor guy. I hate to see I your know. medicine and cabinet. Then, yeah. But how old is he? Is, how, how old is he? He's 65. Okay, so he's young. And obviously with all those drugs, he feels great. And he's ex- he just can't wait to get up in the morning. He's got all this energy. He's probably a sexual dynamo. He's got probably because he's on all these medicines. So that means he feels great. The doctor's taking care of him. Is that right? No. He, no? Actually, his personality is totally changed. Oh. He, like, mumbles, rambles. He's not the person he used to be. And wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean he's got all of these doctors helping him? And his person that could have been the heart attack. Sometimes when you have a heart attack, blood flow to the brain is disturbed, and that can cause problems to the brain, even if it's not diagnosed as a full-blown stroke or if it's not, like, a, something that's really dramatic where you have to be medicalized for it. It could be subtle, and that can definitely happen. It may be the drugs, too. He's on a lot of drugs. Uh, it may be right. emotional, too. Having a heart attack, you know... Can you imagine what that's like? Have you ever had one? No. I mean, can, no. you can just can you imagine what that must be like psychologically to have a, to have your no. heart stop? I mean, that's got to be the most, that's got to be unspeakable. You people, you don't want to get a heart attack. You want to take care of yourself first. The good news is there's a lot he can do. Okay, the drugs aren't helping him. They're keeping him in the game as long as he keeps his. He doesn't make any lifestyle changes. You know, if he lives his life the same way that he's been living when he got to to get to the point where he had a heart attack, and he doesn't change that, then the drugs are keeping him in the game. You know, they're keeping him alive okay. for whatever that's worth. The right trick after is he, he had the heart attack, he quit smoking and well, that's good. he was well, a heavy drinker. And okay. Sober. I'll bet you but it took a heart attack. It took a heart attack to kick. You know, there's something about a heart attack that will probably do that to you, that will get you to quit right. smoking and drinking. He didn't have to go to, he didn't have to like uh, go gradually, did he? It wasn't like a gradual thing. No. He just quit, no, right? After never, all. never again. Right, exactly. And, you know, that's what happens when you have a heart attack. I mean, I don't want to make light of it because it's just, you know, it sends chills down my spine to even think about it. But uh, the point is you don't want to get to that. You don't want to get there. And the good news is there's lots he can do. He should be on CoQ10 immediately, today. Don't, don't hang up the phone. Go get CoQ10. Not only is it incredibly important for the heart, and he's probably deficient in it, but the statin drugs are reducing it even for, reducing his CoQ10 levels even further. It's really important for the heart. Get him on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Should be doing it every day. 
We want to keep his sugar down dramatically. He's, I'm sure he was a sugar eater. Uh, usually goes hand in hand with the alcohol and the smoking. So he's got to dramatically, he's got to have zero tolerance at this point. If he's serious about quitting, serious, if he's as serious as a heart attack, as they say, uh, and he's, he quit smoking and he quit drinking instantly, he should do the same thing with sugar, the refined sugars. Uh, also exercise, moving his lymphatic system is very important. And it can also help him with his mental health issues, moving his circulation, moving his body, getting more blood to the brain, helping his circulatory system. If you want something simple, get on the cardio, uh, the um, uh, healthy brain, and, healthy brain and body pack, which has the cardio effects and a few other things in there. Selenium is also important for the heart. Don't forget that. And probably, and vitamin E is also important. Probably the most important is vitamin C, high doses. Get a book called The Sinatra Solution. It's got a lot of good ideas in there on how to use magnesium, L-carnitine. I mean, it's really endless, the things he could do for his heart. The good news is he's got nowhere to go but up, so anything he does is going to help him. Any little thing he does. Any, I gave you about 10, 15 different things you could do. If he does one of them, he's going to notice a difference. That's the good news. Bad news is, is the prognosis is not good, especially with all those drugs that he's on, which, by the way, slow down the heart. Hello, doctor. They slow down the heart. An already weakened heart is now being slowed down by the medication. I don't mean to be, to be alarmist there. You know, I hope you heard the good news amongst it, it, woven in with the bad news there. Because the good news is really good. He can, make, he can do a lot of things. And he can live another 25 years. Is there any way to, to get off years. all those drugs? Yes, absolutely. He can wean them. Wean, though, and change his life with it. You can't just throw, stop taking the drugs or keeping him in the game. Do you know what I mean when I say that? They're keeping him in the game. If he doesn't change his life, at least he's alive, and they're keeping him alive. But if he wants to really get better, then he's got to change his life, including supplementation, lifestyle, and foods. Also, slow, deep breathing. It's all really about oxygen. When you have a heart attack, it's an oxygen issue. So slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, SDR breathing. Hey, we're, I want to get one more call in, Lori. I hope I helped you. I hope you heard the good news there. Yes. Thank you. Take care. Thanks God bless so much. you. Okay. John in Kansas, you get the last word, my friend. What's going on? Is this Trucker John? Uh, no, this is no. Um, Quantum Touch John. Okay. Uh, what's going on? What did you say? Which uh, kind of John? Which John was this? Quantum Touch from Kansas. One Touch John. Okay. Well, what's going on, John? I've got about a minute. Quantum Touch. Um, oh, yeah. Quantum Touch. Quantum Touch, John. I was just reading about Richard Gordon yesterday. I was just reading a quote from Richard Gordon. Yeah, I love that Quantum Touch. What's going on, John? I know you got uh, something wise to say. We... A lot of folks coming to us uh, wanting help with the keto rash, and we'd like to know what you say about the cause, reversal, and prevention of it. Uh, you know what? I can't say anything about the cause, reversal, and prevention of it because I, I don't know necessarily what it is. Although rashes in general have to do with blood toxicity, it could have something to do with the liver. They could be stressing the liver if their liver's already stressed out. Yeah, i would heard of the keto rash, but rashes, unexplained rashes, often involve bile in the liver. Um, so I, I guess it has something to do with overloading the liver. I go low calorie, reduce the calorie. Remember, ketogenic diet is a low calorie diet, not just low carb. Right. Got to go, John. Have a beautiful day, my friend. This is Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular. Spectacular day, folks. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now.